Mr. Monker is one of the hardest working employees in the city of Union City. Okay. Okay. While you are home in your house, okay. Mr. Monker was at DPW, and the hours he donates to the city okay. is just incredible. He's the only super, one of the only few supervisors in DPW. We went from having assistant superintendents, superintendents, deputy directors, down to him, Alan Watson, and Kathy, who's not even a supervisor, running the department. I'm very proud of the department. I'm very proud of Mr. Monker, Kathy, Alan Watson, and every employee in that department. So I can relate to them very much because I was out there during the storm working side by side with them. So I'm not questioning his job, I'm just questioning he's making three thousand dollars overtime every day. Doesn't mean he make it, he's working the same hours overtime every day. So. Mr. Munker has the hours that he has, he justifies them, we sign off whatever they may be. You can open that also. Pay. Why Sorry? every pay is three thousand? Whatever the hours he submits, the hours he's working. Pay. That's right. Every whatever day. whatever the hours he submits or the hours he's working, Mr. Nunez. And you don't know when we're going to get a contract. So. As soon as the mediator gets back to us with a decision. So when, we went down, when you went down with Mr. Rosenthal, the mediator said, you have to be the only one to make a decision. Sir, we went down to DCA. You're obviously not being informed by your own union. That's sad in itself. But let me just say, we went down with a, with a meeting with the state of New Jersey local government services. They're not a mediator, sir. But that's what you're saying, sir. You're a mediator. Sir, you said we went down with Mr. Lucente. Yes. I did not go down with Mr. Lucente. We went down to Trenton. And we met and trained with local government services. We didn't meet with a mediator. So that's why you say you're in mediation with the president. We're in mediation right now, not with the president, with the union. With the union. To settle the contract. We're very eager to settle the contract. Already, I'm sorry. It's four years already. So I answered the question already. Every month you tell him next month. Thank you very much. Right. Have a wonderful night, sir. Same to you, sir. Sure. Next question. <coughs> Are there any Union City <coughs> residents who want to speak first before I allow out of town residents to speak? No? Okay, so there's no other questions by anyone else? Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Dixon. My home address is 1575th Street. That's in North Bergen. My business address is 116 West 23rd Street, New York, New York. Zip code is 10011. Uh, I've been a securities and investigative lawyer for 18 years and I've been retained by an organization known as the Union City Concerned Citizens Group. Uh, to investigate budgetary matters in several municipalities, including Union City. Uh, my uh, work has just begun really uh, today uh, in the wake of a recent meeting, and the analysis will continue, but I wanted to introduce some uh, questions for the record uh, and give everyone an opportunity to uh, make a response. All the talk in Washington now seems to be about the fiscal cliff, but at first glance, the city appears to have its own fiscal cliff. Um, I see on sheet 11 uh, an amount to be raised for support of the municipal budget to be $63.78 million, an increase over the prior year of more than $3 million, it's a 5% increase. Uh, at first glance, the municipality receiving transitional aid and supposedly under state oversight. Because uh, my question is, is the issue of the state oversight and, and New York City's compliance with DCA. 
uh, sheet four shows the unit city currently didn't use a surplus in the current budget or in the 2012 budget that just ended. Sheet five talks about the transitional aid. That's not what it's called in sheet, but that's what it is, 10.2 mil. I wanted to ask a question about an item on sheet 27, which is what appears to be a sale and lease back of certain city assets in the amount of $818,000. I wanted to ask about the terms of the lease back. In the commercial world, the question we ask as investigators, is this a commercially reasonable arms length transaction? That's the question I have. Uh, sheet 27. This is the HCIA lease? Correct. The uh, I mean, pardon me, Hudson County Improvement Authority. Principal and interest, principal is 47000 Interest is? That's from the fire department was regional monies to the former mayor. Sold the firehouses. That's where that item came from. That's where it goes back to. Prior administration, when the fire department was regionalized. There's a one-shot budget gimmick. A one-shot budget gimmick. Is there any uh, opportunity in the current economic climate to refinance this debt? Get a better interest Mr. rate? I, I don't believe so, not, not on the lease, not that I'm aware of. Um, I believe this debt was issued through the HCIA and um, probably on behalf of the uh, fire, de fire department. If I had my charters, we wouldn't even have that on the books if I would have been a mayor at that point. I would never regionalize. The budget was $5.7 million at the time. We now pay over $18 million plus all this on all the leases that were done as a budget gimmick to win an election at that time. It's a good question that you asked, though. I appreciate that. My next uh, item for discussion concerns an item for interlocal service agreements. The item is referred to on both sheets 7 and 10. This is the interlocal service agreement with the Board of Ed that divulges the following light items. And this all aggregates out to about $2.25 million. This is on sheet seven? Sheet seven. What's your question? Well, all these items, 300000 for the lease of the recreation center, solid waste removal has a $360,000 uh, line item. Gasoline expense of 40000 100000 for a pool, 30000 for a lease of a maintenance facility, almost 600000 for police services, 830000 for the school crossing guards that, were, that was referenced in a prior question. Uh, that's, but not City, that's not on sheet seven. Uh, that's on sheet ten, pardon okay. me. But uh, the aggregate amount of two point two five eight million dollars. Union City being the average school district, the concern that I have, uh, at least preliminarily, is that uh, average funds are supposed to be used for educational purposes, but it appears that these funds are being allocated as average funds to the school system, and then they're going to offset city expenses, which are non-educational and whether that's a proper use of AVID funds. Is that your question? That's the question. That was signed off by the DCA and the Department of Education probably for the last 15 plus years. The reason is the central, the lease of the recreation center is where the children eat lunch. Lunch is an essential part of getting an education so you can eat during the day, have the energy to continue learning. Now, now Mayor Stack, thank you for the answer and, and, and credit this may not be uh, a question for you, but I want to give you the chance to, to respond. Um, has Union City considered getting a legal opinion so it can rely upon the state's action? The state's action legal opinion by given by the Attorney General's office in the state of New Jersey, that's who represents the state. Okay, so it, uh, am I correct in understanding that the Attorney General has actually issued an opinion? The Attorney General's office reviews everything that the DOE and DCA do. You'd have to contact them and ask them if they have an opinion on it. Okay. So, so the, the issue is you're relying upon uh, the Attorney General's the over issue, the oversight. Issue, my, my answer is what I just gave. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, sheet 9.1, the issue, it was raised by, uh, I think, Mr. Price about the Port Authority 
uh, grant of $2.875 million. My question is whether this is a conditional grant, which is customary at least in New York, where I do my work, uh, where a grant is given but there are strings attached, you can only use it for specified instances? Well, they have a project that they, that they identify. Okay, because at first glance, my thought is, and, and given that I, I have uh, family members from this city, I, I, I thought when I saw this item, where does the Port Authority have property in Union City that there's a relationship, but if, if there's a grant involved, I would raise an issue with the Port Authority. In it, it's terms. a feeder community. We hawk into feeder community. Union City would be a feeder community. Hoboken would be a feeder community. New Jersey City would be one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's others along even the, the riverfront that a feeder community is. Port Lee would be a feeder community. I understand. Sheet 10 has a different line item. This is a separate issue uh, than library surf plus calculation of uh, $500,000 in the present year, 1.6 million in the prior year. Uh, are these user fees that are, are basically being used as revenue from users of the library? No, these are appropriations, monies that were appropriated for the library in the years past that have gone unspent. So we're returning it to the taxpayers in the form of revenue. <coughs> I have a question, sheet 11, there's a, uh, a line item, I'll pull this up. It's item four and sheet 11, receipts from delinquent taxes uh, realized, it's a big disparity, realizing 617,000 in, in cash in the uh, fiscal year 2012, but the current year, nothing's anticipated. Was there uh, some sort of tax sale uh, discounting of delinquent uh, accounts? Um, you know, when we prepare our budget, uh, we usually prepare it based on the unordered financial statements. Mm -hmm. um, subsequent to that, uh, we have an audit prepared and we get that by June 30th. Um, <coughs> as of June 30th, there were some, you're, you're correct, some tax lien items um, that, that represent the $600,000 fees that were collected. Um, they were not reflected in the unordered financials, but they were included in the annual audit. Um, also, as far as fiscal year 13, I neglected to put in a dollar amount. There's probably about $70,000 that we can anticipate in revenue in the current year, which will be adjusted when we amend our budget. The amount was how much? It's about $78,000. 70. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. I'm going to call your attention next to Sheet 15, there's a light on for a daycare center. My question here, there's an appropriation for $260,000 um, to a daycare center. Some people have, have, uh, have uh, asked me to, to, to question whether the daycare center is a center that is run by Katie Stack and whether this is run by a nonprofit organization, in which case it appears that government or public funds are being used for private benefit, even though it's a nonprofit. Oftentimes there's plenty of profit in nonprofits. Can you divulge the identity of this daycare center? Sure. Christine? Um, this is the um, Union City Daycare Program, and this expenditure is authorized through an agreement between the city and the interlocal. We do this each year and it's sanctioned by the state, by the DCA. This goes back to Sometime, Eric, probably, and, and you, can't, you can't quote me to the year, but probably back to the late 70s, early 80s, an agreement um, that the city of Union City made with the Union City Daycare Program. I think the commissioner may be at the time that formed the program, may have been Matty Diaz. Um, started off as a very small program and has grown. Is this a nonprofit, though? I mean, the Union City Daycare Program, is that a nonprofit? Yes, it's a nonprofit. Okay. Do you know if it's a federal 50C13? Nonprofit or a state not for profit corporation? I know they receive federal funds. I, I couldn't tell you, Christine. Maybe I, you know. I believe it's a 501c3, but you have to OPRA the agreement with them, and I'm sure it specifies in there. Right. That right. I understand. And there's an alternative. We can always, uh, the IRS actually may be able to provide that to all to spare you the, uh, the trouble. Um, I wanted to ask there's an apparent increase in salary and wage items, which is a concern given the current state of, of 
the fiscal condition. An increase of $146,000. I'm referring to sheet 15E as an error. This is under the, the uh, subheading Recreation. It's uh, line item 28 370 1. Student, all the programs and the management we have, the recreation programs, and the, the beautiful new parks that we have in the city. We have a deputy director in the department. It's probably, Eric, if you looked in this county and you looked under Commission Form of Government, probably probably one of the lowest line items when you look at parks and public property 104,000 for the director's office is extremely low the commission doesn't even have a permanent secretary even if you go back to public works 180,000 for the director's office 134,000 for public safety if you went all the way back and you looked at each one 115,000 for revenue and finance I'll match those numbers up against probably West New York and North Bergen I would, we, there's no mayoral aides in City Hall. There's no assistance in City Hall. It's a pretty bare bones operation. We're down several hundred employees. Okay. And the deputy director of parks is another one. We're very fortunate to have Mark Alves. He's extremely hard working. If you added his salary up and the hours he puts in, he's in the office from 9 in the morning until about 11 o'clock at night, six days a week. Hurricane Sandy, he didn't go home. Okay, thank you for your question. Thank you for your answers. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Uh, I don't I have the, the, the name is the I X X O N. Motion. Motion by Mary.